Today, I'm gonna to be giving you what surely will be considered one of the hottest takes on YouTube. I'm reviewing the as of now four Ghostbusters films from worst to best. You are gonna be surprised by the order this is in. It's gonna blow people's minds. You have never seen a video so controversial in your life. Let's begin. Surprised yet? That's right, Ghostbusters 2016, the all-female disaster that came out by Paul Feig. What the hell was this? Bad. That's the answer. Bad. If you're looking for a pros and cons checklist, here's a pro. It moves kind of fast. There's not a lot of downtime. Uh, the, the Ghostbusters get into hijinks pretty early. That's it. That That's the pro. As for the cons, well, how much time do you have? We'll just gloss over some of the things that I hate about this film. Number one, it's not funny. There's a lot of jokes. None of them land. For some reason, Melissa McCarthy's character has a major fascination with the amount of wontons she gets. Number two, they went all in on dancing. Half of this film are people awkwardly and uncomfortably dancing to crappy music. Number three, the jokes. It was my first bullet point. I brought it back again for number three. There's queefing going on. Melissa McCarthy's flying through the air as she holds onto that proton pack. It's smashing her against the ground. Her fat ass is bouncing off the pavement. Laugh. Laugh at this. These women, who I usually find very funny and talented, cannot shut the hell up for five seconds and let someone else talk. They're constantly pining for the attention of the screen. They can't let anything breathe. The fourth thing I hate about this is they bring back the original cast and have them play different people. Why? The film is like, look, we're a new Ghostbusters, but also, remember how much better all of this stuff is? Here's Slimer, here's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, here are most of the original actors playing terrible characters. Bottom line, this is a horrible film, and anyone involved in it should feel bad. Let's move on. Tarot cards on the table. I was joking at the beginning of this ranking by saying this will be a controversial one. However, putting Ghostbusters Afterlife in the three spot might actually ruffle some feathers because I know there is a good chunk of people that don't like Ghostbusters 2 at all. So maybe those would flip flop. I recently reviewed Ghostbusters Afterlife. If you want to hear my full thoughts on it, please check that video out. People were very upset that I didn't love the movie and I had a lot of criticisms about it. I also didn't hate this movie. I was just kind of indifferent to it all, a little bit let down. For some reason, the internet takes that as, this movie is an abortion and should never have been created and I hate it. That's not true. It just wasn't the type of movie I was looking forward to. I love the original two Ghostbusters films because of the humor, because of the smart dialogue, because of the way Ivan Reitman masterfully blends different genres together, and of course, because of the OG Ghostbusters. So taking essentially every single part of that and throwing it out the window in favor for more of a Stranger Things approach wasn't something I was too keen on. Now, I can still look at this and say that's a very competently made movie, it's well done, it's got a lot of callbacks, it's reusing the same villain again, which I guess some people really enjoy. I prefer if they would have done something new. I also would have preferred the original Ghostbusters being back for this, even though one of them's not around. They clearly were okay signing up, so maybe make them the focus. There's no reason not to. My many hangups with the film aside, there are things that absolutely work and I do appreciate. For starters, McKenny Grace is Phoebe, Egon Spangler's granddaughter, fantastic little actress. She nails it in this movie. And I think that if she was paired with a couple more kids that were a little bit more exciting to listen to, and we gave them more Goonies style adventures to go on together, it would really work. Unfortunately, most of the time, she's only paired with podcasts and he's the other character that I really do like. Their scenes together and their interactions are really well done. It's the teenagers that really take the fun out of it. Their scenes are very sluggish to get through. And the overall pace of the film is very slow to get rolling. I mean, how many times do we have to have the lights turn on and off Stranger Things communication to, to kick in before they finally get the ghost traps and the, the ghost packs and the Ecto-1 moving? It takes a good hour or so. As I stated in this review though, people are gonna love this movie for the reasons I kind of roll my eyes at it and that's perfectly fine. I don't discredit anyone that comes out of this film and says, that was great, I loved it, I wanna see more of that now. I like the new direction Ghostbusters is headed. The old ones are, are still there. We don't need to keep doing the comedy angle. Instead, we can go more of this drama comedy. A dramedy. Appropriately enough, the number two spot on my list is Ghostbusters 2. 
I also recently did a video on Ghostbusters 2 where I defended it for a good 15 minutes. Please check that one out as well. I'm not going to be redundant here. I'll just quickly go over the highlights and some of the things that people don't like about it. For starters, the reason this one doesn't rise above that of the first is because of the familiar retreading of old ground. The fact that the Ghostbusters have to kind of start over and become Ghostbusters again after getting sued by the city that for some reason the mayor didn't remember these guys saving. I don't know, that, that stuff's all very confusing. The Statue of Liberty is just cloning the Stay Puft Marshmallow again, another giant object going down the streets. That final act could have definitely gone a different direction. I love that the gang is back. Rick Moranis is funny as ever. Shout out to Rick Moranis. He always kills it and we don't talk about him enough in the Ghostbusters movies but it's just because he retired, that's why he's not coming back for these. And yeah, he sounds like he's just a great guy, uh, which is rare to say about Hollywood actor or actress. <laughs> like I said though, our leads are all back. They're still firing jokes out left and right. There's tons of quotable lines. There's some really scary stuff in here. Uh, Vigo the painting, phenomenal villain until he steps out of the painting. Then he's not so much. The atmosphere, the tone of the movie, it's all there still, just like the original. I just don't get why people hate this so much. I also, once again, have to give props to Peter Macnichol as Janos. Steals every scene he's in, so completely off the wall with that character. And I just saw him show up again last night in a movie my family and I watched together, Adam's Family Values. We've seen it probably a dozen times. I have no idea why, but it never dawned on me that he's one of the camp counselors in that. By the way, for the Americans watching, Adam's Family Values is a fantastic Thanksgiving film. Ghostbusters 2 and 1, of course, can't keep up with the effects work we have today, but it still looks pretty solid. I mean, they do some really unique stuff with uh, the effects in this movie, and the one thing it does have over all of the other films, in my opinion, is... The soundtrack. Not only do we have Ray Parker Jr.'s great song, but we got Bobby Brown with a new one on our own. And that thing is a banger. Let's head to the incredibly shocking number one spot. Ghostbusters is such a gem, isn't it? It's just like Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Star Wars. They just, it has such a fun, different feel to it. There's so much to love here, from the proton packs to the Ecto-1 driving around at night, to our heroes quipping while there's an evil entity trying to destroy the world. Even when it has serious consequences, it never takes itself serious. Every actor brings unique comedy to the table. Bill Murray has his trademark dry wit. Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis are bringing their charming lovableness to scientists nerding out over spores and fungus. And then there's Ernie Hudson as Winston, just trying to get a paycheck and survive the night with these guys. He's the straight man to these crazy characters who has no problem pointing out the insanity of everything happening around them. On its surface, Ghostbusters has that National Lampoons-ish comedy going for it, but underneath, there's a rich lore to it all with Gozer and the Keymaster and the Gatekeeper. There's all this stuff that you can really dig into and fans have over the many years. Ghostbusters works so well because you can just see the passion on the screen from both the script and the way it was filmed by Ivan Reitman. There is nothing like this film and there never will be again, no matter how much they try to recreate this magic. It truly was lightning in a bottle. Well, there's my ranking. It's mass hysteria, isn't it? I want to hear from you now. Let me know in the comments your ranking and which one of these films ghost busting makes you feel good. Please like the video and subscribe if you want and hit that notification bell so these videos show up right in your feed. I'm trying to get videos out constantly so it's great if I have more eyes on these things as they come out. And on a personal note, I always wanted to be a Ghostbuster for Halloween. The closest I got was having one of those Super Soaker Ghostbuster backpacks back when I was like 10. I mean, you filled that whole thing with water and it even had the, the squirt gun attachment. That shit would drip all over. You'd be soaking wet. It really defeated the whole purpose of it all. It was a cool thing regardless. But now that I'm older, I think it's time to pull the trigger and, and actually dress up as a Ghostbuster for Halloween next year. That's, that's a personal goal of mine. I don't know why I went on a tangent about the, the, the water gun. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you around. <laughs> They had the right idea with the water pack, just not the proper execution. Oh, you're still here. Since you stuck around, there's other videos you can look at. Probably on this side, that's probably where I'll put them. A video, the subscription thing again. And I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Or you can join right here on YouTube. Those are just ways you can show your support for me and the channel. It's a, it's a lot of work, believe it or not.